that last weekend, Simbit World announced that they had released version two of A Pilot's Life. So there's version one. Here, my friends, is version two of A Pilot's Life. Uh, it's called Chapter Two, but uh, it's basically version two. So it's basically a, an upgraded, uh, kind of re remade version of A Pilot's Life. Uh, and I've got to say that uh, having used this a little bit, I think it is really a really good piece of software, and I highly recommend it to pretty much anyone who has sat there for more than five minutes in their life at some point and said, "Where am I going to fly my sim today?" Because it just takes the kind of it takes the um, it takes the decision making out of out of uh, where do I want to fly. It gives you flight assignments that you have to fly. So I I think it's a very useful. Uh, I think it's a very useful software like that. It's a really kind of a lot of fun. And uh, version two has now added a whole bunch of new elements that add a whole bunch of new fun to this uh, to this software. Um, so I'm going to kind of walk you through what what what's in here, what's different, what's the same, and, and let you guys decide if it's worth it or not for you. I, if you if you own version one, chapter one, I think this is a, this is a no brainer. Um, it takes everything that was good about chapter one and just uh, tweaks it and improves it a little bit more, improves the user interface, improves the experience, adds a little more interactivity, a little more challenge. Um, if you never owned chapter one, I, I still think it's probably worth the price even for chapter two. It's a little bit pricier than chapter one was, but uh, I think it's I think it's worth the extra price for uh, what you get for the fun you get to have uh, with this whole thing. So I'm going to walk you through the software and show you kind of what's going on here. Now, one of the first things I'd like to point out as well is that uh, one of the biggest shortcomings I found with chapter one was that once you started a flight, and here we are flying in chapter one, you cannot leave this screen. Uh, leave this page once your flight is in progress. So you take off on your flight and uh, you are not allowed to leave this page again for the rest of the flight. You can't read your messages. You can't go ch uh, check out what's happening in the community. You're stuck on this page till your flight is over. That was always a bit frustrating. I guess it's just the way it was programmed in and need this page open for the monitoring, for the monitoring but I, I always found that frustrating. Version 2 does away with that. In version two, you, even if you have a flight active, you can go and visit all the pages of your uh, Pilot's Life software here without uh, losing your progress on that flight. It still tracks it in the background, even if you're away from that page. So that was a simple uh, change to the user interface, but to me, it was so integral. Uh, such, an, uh, such an obvious improvement. It was so frustrating sometimes, especially when I was streaming. I was trying to show you how that software worked, and I couldn't because once we started the flight, I can't show you anything in that software anymore. But this one, I can show you everything because, of course, we're not flying anyways. Uh, so of course, here's our dashboard. It has uh, us as a us as a pilot here. We're starting our over a new career. Who you work for, um, your experience points, cash, everything like that. Your bank account, uh, inbox, everything, and uh, kind of your your logbook here. Uh, so everything is kind of right here on the dashboard. And there's also at the bottom. You'll notice there's also connections now. This is the software also connects to the server while you're flying, um, partly to create a live map, partly to uh, create an interactive world that you're a little that you're kind of a part of now um, and I'll show you a little bit more about that in a second here uh, basically as before it, it the, the whole philosophy of the software is very similar to before but with a few new added twists and challenges so here's the job market again uh, same as before once you once you start your career you actually uh, go to the job market and you start uh, shopping around for airlines you want to work for you'll have various job offers I don't have any because I'm still on my probation period at my current airline so for seven days you're not allowed to leave your current airline after you join a new airline so I'm not being offered any jobs um, but you got the same basic idea here you've got a whole bunch of airlines with different star ratings you can see the details you can apply to them you can filter them out by different uh, different search criteria um, what is new uh, and adds a neat little tweak to this is that you now have to obtain uh, aircraft type ratings before you can go and fly for a particular airline. So if you go to shop here, and they call them aircraft licenses, basically it would be a type rating. Um, but before uh, you can fly for an airline, you have to get type rated and you have to pay for your own type rating. So depending on the size of aircraft, smaller aircraft, the 220, 310, 1500, 320 family, 2500, 330 family, 3000, um, depending on the relative size of the aircraft, uh, your, your type ratings will, the, the cost of your type rating will vary. Nice thing is that they're kind of linked together by family so that you're not kind of like, oh, you've only got the 737-700. In the real world, usually a type rating for a, a whole family is transferable between all the different types in that family. So I kind of like the way they've organized that here. You've got a various different families. You can buy a type rating for this one. So how do you buy a type rating if you don't have a job? One of the nice things is that right off the bat, they give you five grand. 
So when you start your career in a pilot's life now, you have $5,000, but you have to go and buy yourself one or maybe two type ratings. You can choose what you want. You go in here, you pick the ones you want, but then you can only work for airlines that have these particular aircraft. So be very careful with this because you can go through that $5,000 really quick. Uh, I went with the CRJ family because I figured if I'm starting out the career, I'm going to be kind of entry-level airlines. A lot of uh, entry-level operators will be operating CRJs. I'm also saving my money now. I contemplated buying the 320, but I'm saving my money for the 737 family when that PMDG 737 comes out. Spend some of my last money here, 2,500 bucks, to get that type rating and be able to fly that uh, in version 2 here. Once you've got your type rating, then you can go ahead and apply for a job. So, And one of the nice things is that you can... Um, filter out by aircraft license available so you can filter out anything that doesn't fly the aircraft that you have licenses for so now these are the only airlines around the world that I can apply to because these are the only airlines that fly the air the aircraft that I'm currently type rated on so I can only apply to these airlines applying to the other ones they won't even let me because I'm not I don't have uh, a license to fly any of their aircraft I think it's not going to let me apply because job application not accepted you're within the seven day period of your current job uh, can't apply to another one until that period is ended. So you would could click and apply to anything here. You can apply to up to five different airlines at a time and see who gets back to you. One of the nice things is that they get back to you uh, any business day, Monday to Friday. The airlines will uh, will come up with a with an answer the next day. So it's a little bit of a faster turnaround for getting a new job than it was in the previous version. However. So one of the in most interesting features of this new version of uh, A Pilot's Life here is that we now have a limited number of jobs available in each airline. Um, so you can see here, relative to the size of the real world airlines, um, there is a limit to the number of pilots that can be hired by each airline. Smaller airlines, you may only have a handful of positions, five or six or nine positions, larger airlines. Um, you know, you'll have a you may have a couple hundred pilot positions uh, available, like you go to the world's largest airlines, like. Uh, even Air Canada is not necessarily a huge airline. Air France, 209 pilots can work there. Uh, Air Canada, 202. Air China, 386. Um, so there's a limit. And uh, if you look, for example, at the airline that I work for. So uh, I got a job here working with Elite Airways here in uh, the United States. If I can find it. Um, but because it is a low-star airline, why can't I find... Elite. Oh, there it is. Um, yeah, because I because Elite is a relatively low star airline, and because the software just launched very recently, all the pilots in here are relatively low star pilots, so they can only um, they can only work usually for very low star airlines. If you apply to these major airlines, if you've got very few experience points, they're probably not going to accept you. So as a result, all these low end airlines right now are pretty much full. So uh, you can see this one here, it's 19, pilots of 19 pilot jobs available and there are 19 pilots working here. So even if someone was to apply tomorrow, they would get turned down because there's no more positions. So it adds a really kind of neat uh, community interactive, um, interactive element in that uh, you are competing with your fellow players for these jobs. If a bunch of people apply to the same airline and there's only a limited number of jobs available, most likely the jobs are going to get offered to the people who have the most experience points, the people who are uh, the people who are the best candidate for the job here. So it's um, it, it adds a neat little interactivity. So right now no one else can apply for Elite Airways until somebody moves on. Hopefully sooner or later somebody's going to move on, but uh, you're locked into working for your, first, your company for seven days still. Uh, you can't apply for a new job within that first seven days. So all these people are kind of locked in there for seven days. So uh, there's no point in anybody else even applying to this airline for the time being. The one of the nice things that they did change is that the, uh, the job offers are now um, evaluated every single working day. So Monday to Friday, um, any job offers that came in the day before, I think it's at 9 a.m. every 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 weekday, uh, the job offers will be evaluated and job uh, job applications will be evaluated and job offers will be made or rejected, um, you know, depending on your stats and everything else. And there's, certain, there's an element of random chance to it as well. So that's a really kind of neat element that... Uh, that adds a little bit of uh, limitation to the, the software. There's about a thousand pilots online right now, and I don't know how many jobs there are in total, but there's probably a couple thousand jobs available. One thing that the developer did mention as well in his Discord is that uh, 
the number of jobs at each company will scale as the number of users grow. So you don't have to worry about if you're late to the game being locked out of all the jobs altogether. If uh, the number of users in the system starts to grow um, beyond a certain point, the number of jobs available at each company is also going to scale up to match that automatically as, over time. So um, right now, in the, right now, because the software just launches, a little bit awkward because everyone can only work at these small starter airlines. There's very few people. Although one person got into work at Eddie Had here, just luck of the luck of the draw. But you'll see that the one and two star airlines have a much higher number of employees. Uh, Twenty here at Empire out of fifty four. Uh, 47 out of 100, like a lo lot, a much large number of employees at these lower ones. Uh, Develop Airlines, seven out of seven. It's fully, uh, it's fully staffed right now. So, but over the next uh, few weeks, as the first few people in this uh, that got into this and start to apply to other airlines and move on, you'll see these entry level positions will open up again. So it's a little bit of a bottleneck right now, just because the software just launched. That should kind of balance itself out over the first few weeks the software operates. Once you've got yourself a job, then you can apply for a schedule. And this scheduling system works pretty much the same as it did before. I can't show you the generate feature right now because I have a schedule, but here's the schedule I've got set for myself. Um, but uh, it's got basically the same features you had before. You can pick uh, short range, mid range, or long haul flights. You can um, uh, you can pick uh, the hub you want to operate or operate from any of the hubs. There's now a few new options as well. I can't show them to you here, but there's a few new options where you can do round trips, uh, continuous trips, or random trips. So round trips obviously only ever go from your hub out to a destination and back. Uh, uh, continuous trips will let you go from your hub through to various airports and eventually loop back to your hub at the end of the month. And then random trips will literally just assign you random trips that are not connected. So you might go from Indiana, Indianapolis to Melbourne. Then the next one you might do is JFK to DFW. Then you might go from uh, Chicago up to Seattle, completely disconnected. Um, there's no connection between them. But it lets you pick the kind of what you want to do. So you've always got your chance. You can regenerate the schedule as many times as you want until you're happy with it and then accept it. As you can see, the skip flight option still exists as well. I've never used it. But if you wanted to, if you didn't want to do one particular flight, uh, you get five flights, five skips uh, per m per month, I believe it is. Or it might be per schedule. Um, and then if you use them all up, you can buy more course we've got a logbook and we've got flight tracking that goes on and I'll show you the logbook actually a little bit more later on and of course we've got the flight screen which shows us the status of our current flight um, because this is not an actual flight we're flying uh, it says we're not started because we've got the wrong type of aircraft um, we're in the wrong location so it didn't recognize our start but the nice thing is it will automatically start as long as you meet all the right conditions the tracking is a lot more um, in-depth than the previous version tracks a lot of different elements to score you on the flight based on how you perform on the flight overall so it's no longer just um, it's no longer just release the parking brake fly to your destination and set the parking brake again now you actually have to um, it actually monitors you a certain parameters of your performance and uh, I'll show you that uh, in a minute here um, but you can change your altitude you can change the type of aircraft on the flight and of course it has a moving map and progress bar and everything as you go showing you what you're doing once you finish a flight then you get scored on your flight and the actual experience points you get are based partly on your score so as you can see i did uh, i got pretty good scores here 99 there's 100 possible points so i got almost full almost a perfect score on these flights so i got lots of experience points if you don't do as well on your flight you won't get as many experience points and it'll take you longer to get to those higher airlines so let's take the last flight here i did uh, and i can show you what the actual scoring table looks like and it's really kind of it's really quite well done it looks a lot like a uh, flight test report here um, and general taxi out takeoff is broken down into a whole bunch of different sections uh, within each section there's points assigned for different things they're basic basic kind of operational things the only thing i lost points here because i know you guys are going to look for it here transponder on and i'm not sure what the heck's going on here because i did because uh, with fs2 crew uh, the fo's turned my transponder on and i looked down and it's on during the taxi out but for some reason, it's it's being failed every single time and getting zero out of one on it. But uh, I'm getting everything else. But it measures things like making sure your flaps are set before takeoff. You're not taxing too fast, less than 30 knots ground speed, um, pitch angle, um, exceedances, making sure you get the landing light on for takeoff. Pitch angles not greater than never greater than 20 degrees, uh, never greater than 15 degrees for approach and landing. Uh, so various things. Uh, not pausing during cruise and not using slew during cruise. You'll lose points for that. So it adds all that up together and gives you a score out of 100. And then uh, your experience points are based on kind of multiplying your, your score, uh, your flight report score, ba uh, and uh, the distance and time you've flown for. So multiply those th two things together and you get, uh, you get your actual experience point score. So the better you do at flying the aircraft, flying the flights, the, the quicker you'll accumulate experience and other airlines will uh, hire 
caliber airlines will want to hire you. So it's really kind of a neat, uh, a neat system. It's well done. Um, I didn't have too many problems, even though I was using a third-party aircraft. I was using the CRJ. It seemed to track most of the variables pretty well. Uh, and then uh, it even gives you like the little map and, and, and your airspeed and everything. So it gives you lots of nice charts. So it gives you a nice summary of every flight that you've done. Uh, you can see uh, exactly what's happened here. Uh, we still have the ability to shop for various things, same as before. So you can spend your money. Now, of course, one of the things we do need to shop for is aircraft licenses. And that's going to be quite costly. So after the first two licenses, it's going to take you a while to save up some money. Most of the other stuff that was in the previous version that you could buy is also still there. So you can buy uh, either investments or instead of buying things to fill your toolbox, now it's education. So if you pay for education, you can build up your experience points faster. So if I decide to take a course in situational awareness, it'll cost me 2500 bucks. I'll get an extra 0.25% experience points for every flight. If I move up through these and I, I spend $20,000 on an aircraft management automation course, I'll get 2% bonus experience points on every flight. Um, and then, of course, you've got the same old investment ones where you can uh, plunk down money for an investment and instead get regular income um, or, or get a bonus with every flight. Uh, so if I buy stocks for, what is that, $100,000, I'll get 10% extra pay on every flight. Uh, it's a little different before it used to do it on a monthly basis. It used to give you like a monthly income. Now it's, it just increases your pay, your pay for the flights you've actually done. As well, if you can buy the aircraft licenses, as I mentioned, you can also buy additional flight skips and you can also buy flight tickets. And this was, these were also in the previous version. Flight tickets are kind of fun. Um, if you want to fly a flight for an airline that's not your airline, just for fun, you can buy a flight ticket. It's basically like buying a, a vacation and you can put that towards your experience points. You don't get paid for it, but you can put that towards your experience points. Um, so if I go in here, I can literally search for departure and arrival. So if I want to do JFK to Heathrow, it'll search and tell me what airlines I can fly. It'll give me a price for those. It'll give me a discount for any airline I work for. And I can buy that and I can add that to my, to my uh, schedule and I can fly that flight with whatever aircraft I want as a vacation flight. That's kind of, uh, so it's kind of a little bit of fun way to fly different, uh, different airlines or maybe different routes that may not be in your current, uh, in current route. Um, the community page is kind of similar to what it was before. You can have friends in your community and, uh, as well, it's got leaderboards for experience points and, uh, and wealth and then it's also got some global stats so this is just since the, since the system was fired up about five days ago there's a thousand forty two pilots in total they've done three thousand flights recorded forty eight hundred hours right now there's 152 connected pilots 108 flights so people 150 people on the software open 108 flights are running right now you can see the, the current flight map um, you can see the public stats and you can also see your airline leaderboard so on your own airline you can see where you rank i'm number three out of 19 in my airline uh, in terms of experience points and you can even check and see what what's happening at different uh, airlines so uh, anybody work at federal express one person works at federal express so <laughs> gojet anyone work at gojet yeah nobody works at gojet what was one that had uh, a lot of people working at it um uh, what was it started with the started with an n No, I can't remember what it was. <laughs> Honestly, I can't remember what it was. But but you can see the ranks of different airlines. You can see who's got how many experience points. You can see the whole leaderboard for the community. Uh, so it's kind of fun to, to kind of compete with the whole community. And of course, same as before, you can do reports of your own uh, career. Uh, see how many hours you've gotten each month and whatnot for your own career. Obviously, it's going to be pretty simple, basic report because it's right now the software has only been out for a couple of weeks and I've only been flying for it for a week. So uh, it's a pretty basic software, but you can see how many hours I've logged in the different days and so on and so forth. Uh, there's also uh, achievements, and I don't even know where to see the achievements anymore. Um, oh, achievements are here on the dashboard. So you can have various achievements. Hummingbird, I've completed one flight. Captain Sully Award for a smooth landing of less than 50 feet per minute and party starter because I got my first friend. So uh, just just some achievements just to add some fun to it as well. You can even take photos and save them to photo album. Uh, so there's lots of neat things that you can kind of do with this. It's, it's, it takes a lot of the same things that happened in version in chapter one of a, of a pilot's life. And it just it's taken them and just improved them a little bit more. It's improved the user interface a lot. I think the user interface is it's fixed a lot of the problems with the user interface. It's fixed some of these other issues just a little bit, but uh, but uh, it's added some neat uh, additional features now to uh, 
uh, to a pilot's life to make it just that much more interactive, that much more challenging, and give you that much more to work towards to uh, to make your career progress. So if you haven't picked it up, I think it's uh, 30 euros on Sim Market, so it's a little bit uh, pricier than the than the first version. Uh, those of you that own the first version are entitled to an up upgrade discount. Otherwise, uh, I believe it's 30 euros. I think it's worthwhile. If you've ever sat there and said to yourself, where am I going to fly today? I don't know what I want to fly. And you spent more than five minutes trying to decide. This is the perfect software for you. Pick it up. It'll it'll assign you flights. You fly them in order. Boom, make some money along the way. Uh, but it's it takes a lot of that uh, decision making out of the uh, out of it. You just sit down. You're like, I've got this flight to do. Get it done.